Well, if Ipswich Town want to stay at the top of the table this weekend, they have to do something which they haven't done in 15 years. That's win at Carrow Road. It's the big one. Welcome back to the Ipswich View. How are you, Ian? Yeah, I'm on. I'm buzzing from a weekend full of chocolate and goals, and uh, now is straight ahead focus of a week of trolling Norwich fans. So yeah, <laughs> focus is on. All right, we're going to talk to you obviously about that Southampton game in a second. And delighted on the Ipswich Town View this week, we've got Canaries flown into town. How are you, Liam? Yeah, I'm not too bad yourself. Yeah, good. Thank you. We'll come to you in a second, um, Ian. Um, I um, spent. Sunday, as I'm sure many of us did, watching City Arsenal bored to tears of tactical battles. And I just want to say, on behalf of every football fan, thank you for that classic uh, game against Southampton. Two teams generally playing good football, trying to get the win. No palavers, no rolling around on the floor. It was a joy to watch. Um, and of course, Another last-minute winner for the town. Talk us through how you saw it. Uh, it was a brilliant... I mean, Southampton, credit to them. You know, great turnout from the fans because it's a long way to go. Even though Ipswich took that early goal to Southampton and come around and score literally within a minute that just put the crowd on their seats. And, you know, they had played really, really strong football for Southampton. And even towards the end, when it was 2 all, you thought, well, maybe they'll sit and they'll take the point. They just kept coming. And Ipswich, like he said, uh, like a battled, hardened boxer in the ring, much like Wardley had been the night before. They just never gave up. And we don't know how to give up. And I think for a neutral fan, looking at that, you go, do you know what? This is what football's about. Two teams playing with passion. You know, I don't think you ever really experienced that in the Premier League to that degree. It's just, it was like a playoff final. It really was. And, and, and the, the whistle, the end of the whistle, I don't think anybody left. Everyone was just still stood there taking it in. It was a really, it was a great day. And yeah, someone might say, "I oh, enjoy your cup final." Well, whatever, I enjoyed it. Yeah, so it was good. yeah, yeah, and it still might be the playoff final. Of course, uh, who's yes, <laughs> is uh, is hoping? Um, okay, then um, let's get down to business. Then um, Ian, talk us through what it's like as a Ipswich Town fan walking walking along the streets of, of Norwich into Carrow Road. Does it feel different? Yeah, you know, I'm always I always take the train, and you come out of the station and you hit the river and you turn left. You follow the river around past the old Coleman's factory and up the hill into the ground, and you go past. It always, always looks a bit. The ground always looked a bit scruffy outside. They've yeah. made it a lot smarter now, but you'd come along and you'd see like the Barclay end. And in the years gone by, they would, you'd be caged in like animals. So There's really bad fencing there, but. Yeah, it's a real, it's a different atmosphere from any other game I ever go to, Norwich away. I mean, if you can get a golden ticket, because that is literally the most sought after ticket I can find in football. And yeah, it's it's a week of run up. You've got people who live on the Suffolk Norfolk border. You know, you don't know who they're going to support. And it's really, families are torn apart. I mean, my my daughter-in-law is a Norwich fan, you know, my, her, her father is a Norwich fan, you know, so I took great delight in sending, you know, my grandson an Ipswich Town membership and stuff, so yeah, it's, it, it is, it's great. Okay. Liam, for Norwich fans, what, talk us about what this fixture means to you, I mean, I suppose for you, it's a fixture which you just think, well, it's a fixture we always get three points from, isn't it? Does it feel different this time round? Um, I don't know whether I'd, yeah, I, actually, yeah, I just, it does feel different because Ipswich are in well. They're in fine form. Um, recently, we've played them and they've not been not been great. Let's face it. Um, then form doesn't exactly matter for a derby game. I and mean, we look at it reverse fixture uh, earlier this season. We were in abysmal, um, and Ipswich were were very good. But two two rolls out the door, and you know you're, you're happy. You take a point away there, and if you can get the three points at home. Bragging rights are yours. So yeah, uh, excited though. Uh, yeah, I mean, Norwich aren't conceding, are they, at the moment? I mean, you conceded two goals, I think, in the last five, five matches, by well, to, well, not to, before the Leicester game anyway. What um, what have Ipswich got to do, then, to get behind your back line? What, what's been the success of uh, of recent results, without giving too much away? Well, I think just, just watch Monday's game. Leicester found it very easy. All it was was a, a long ball sort of over and attack full-backs, really, because... Stacey and McCallum both like to get forwards and, and they do lack sort of the option to track back at the best of times. So um just sort of just attack the full backs and I think they'll 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 get in quite a few times. It's just 
how resolute Gibson and hopefully Duffy are on, on Saturday. Okay, uh, Ian, um, with illnesses and, and injuries, um, are Ipswich looking a bit threadbare going into this one? Um, Lee Davis played with flu on yesterday on Monday, and he had a man of the match outgoing. I think the, the, the concern for me is Kiefer Moore took a rather bad knock in the back. What it means is we'll have to change the tactics. Ali Al Hamadi will come in. We'll play on the ground a lot more because he won't be able to hold it up as well as Kiefer Moore. That type of play will probably suit the likes of Amari Hutchinson. I think the key thing in here, does Broadhead start the game or does he look to maybe start Samiento? Um, it's interesting. We started with Hutchinson out to the left here on Monday and he was so much more effective on the right. Yes, we're still going to miss Wes Burns, but I think that the key for more, yes or no, is going to be a big decision. It will certainly dictate whether we try to play on the ground a bit more. I think that the way Leicester played, we don't play like that. So I don't think Norwich is going to have to worry about Route 1 football. Um, we like to play it out from the back. That could be costly with the likes of um, you know, Sarah and Sergeant pushing at us. So we'll have to see. Okay. Uh, Liam, any key personnel missing or are you full uh, full throttle? Apart from, from Roe, we, we should be full throttle. Um, obviously, Roe knows a thing about scoring at uh, Portman Road against it, so it doesn't he say. It's a shame that he won't be there to do it again. We have got Sergeant, we've got Sines, Sarah, all, all of them that are sort of playing on fire at the moment. So, yeah. Yeah, and a packed Carrow Road as well, who are probably not going to stop singing, I'm guessing, uh, all games. Should we try and get some score predictions then before, Ian, I want to ask you about your uh, your player yeah. of the month for March. And we're also talking about last minute winners as well. Um, you, you could pick a few out of this season, couldn't you? But what is the best Ipswich Town winner uh, past the 90th minute that you have seen? Um, before we do that, if you're an Ipswich Town fan, please comment below. Uh, which goal you think uh, that should be. And also put a like, please, because we love making this content for you. And we've got five more, five more of these to go before we sit here and either congratulate Ipswich Town and say goodbye to you into the Premier League. And welcome um, Portsmouth, yeah. And welcome Portsmouth. <laughs> and Derby County, yeah. Um, just uh, joking aside, does it... Does the, the, the Premier League is, is getting a bit of stick at the moment. Does it make you look at it and go... Actually, I'd prefer not to be there. Uh, yeah, just... yeah. If, if you had the TV television rights broadcast deals that the championship deserved, it's double-edged because it also brings in the increased salaries. Yeah, the, the gap in football is not so much the quality, although, yes, there is. It's the salaries of the players. The players yeah. are looking forward to get the Premier League. They can triple their wages. But, you know, some of those players are going to gain promotion will be out of work next year. So it, yeah. it's swings and roundabouts, you know. We're not going to, dis- you know, we're not going to argue that the championship is fantastic football, but I think fans of any club would like to see the likes of Haaland coming down, Jack Grealish coming down, you know, some of the talent at Arsenal. You'd love to see them in your own grounds. You know, it's, it's certainly a bit better than watching maybe Rotherham. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Rotherham fans. <laughs> All right, let's get some predictions then, please. Yeah. Uh, Liam, you can go first. You're at home. You're two one Norwich. Confident, Ian. Yeah, it's going to be a ping pong game, isn't it? Goals backwards or backwards and forwards. I think Norwich will take the lead twice through probably um, Sergeant at least one. I think Gibbs, you know, to get his own back at Ipswich. Um, and I'm looking at any of the substitutes, Ipswich coming on, getting that last minute winner. Lucky FC celebrating in the away fans. It's going to be carnage. That's all I'm going to say. Absolute <laughs> carnage. Yeah. All right. Fifteen years in the making. Then let's see if it let's see if it materializes. All right, Liam. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll pop you off. Good luck. And uh, yes, thank you. Behave see you yourselves. See you next week, Liam. <laughs> yeah. See you next week. All oh, very nice to each other. It's not. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to be like that. Um. Yeah. So player of the month for for March. Few contenders here, I'd imagine. Yeah, there are, and I really believe that when you look at the context and the background on the play, I think it's got to be Leif Davis. You know, I absolutely think that there is a large cohort of England fans screaming out for a decent left back at the moment. And you haven't got to look far. You know, if Leif Davis has been picked up in the January transfer window and gone to teams that he's been touted with, like West Ham and Crystal Palace, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind he'd be going to the Euros. So for me, Leif Davis has been consistent. He's the leading assist in all time for a defender. I think he's probably going to end up being the league's leading assist player as well. Like I say, look at the game from Monday. Playing with a flu uh, is just phenomenal. What a player. Brilliant. Yeah, man, man, of the, man of the month for me, Leif Davis. 
Yeah, as you say, if Luke Shaw gets injured, you, you actually can't yeah. think of any any other one, can you? Yeah, uh, not sure. Sure. Oh, no, please no. Um, okay, what about then the uh, <laughs> the Ooh. best ninetieth minute goal you've seen scored well, in an Ipswich shirt? I, I will put a caveat because it could well have been that Monday's winner for Samiento. <laughs> if that leads to us being the difference between promotion and not, that will be the best ninetieth minute plus goal. But I think when I say the goal, I'm going to mention. Any fan who's been following for at least the last 25, 30 years would agree with me. And it has to be the, the playoff semi-final, second leg, an evening match at home to Bolton Wanderers, coming back from a 2-2 goal, a 2-2 draw at Reebok. Um, we were going down 3-2 at home. And in the 90th minute, Magic Magilton, our skipper, juggled his way through players in the box and put in a hat-trick to equalise to take it into extra time which saw a penalty saved, the player sent off, and ultimately Ipswich running out winners. And I, I compared the, the, the atmosphere against um, Southampton. The, 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 the feeling in the crowd was so similar to that night when we beat Bolton. And you just felt there was something in there. You knew that when we got to Wembley, there was nothing to fear. And I just felt that having beaten Southampton, who were probably one of the best teams we've seen at Port Road this year, having beaten Southampton, no matter if it was lucky or the fact that Southampton doubled their passes against ours, he, he felt that if we can do that, that it's our year. So the, the belief has always been strong, but that that is it. I mean, so for me, Jim and Jill's goal, playoffs 2000, and then Sarmiento's is, is yet to be seen whether that was going to be one that we always talk about. A guy on loan from Brighton, hence the seagull. <laughs> Very good, yeah. And I've got to say, even as a neutral, you've got us jumping out of your seats for that for that, for that yeah. goal. I mean, I've, I've never, I've never been to Portman Road as a, as wow. as, an Ever, as an Everton fan because, of course, you were, you've not been in the in the Premier League. So well, let's point. hope we're not passing ships in the night. Coming, well, I think come, we may be. I think, August, yeah. <laughs> I think I think we'll be going down as you're going up, and we'll wave to you on the way and say, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, of good luck. All the, all the neutrals have, have got it. I've got it with you, and of course, yeah. Let's see if you can end the uh, the curse of Carrow Road this uh, this uh, yeah, this Saturday. Absolutely. Thanks, Ian, and thanks everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. Put your comments, put your like, and uh, yeah, good luck against Norwich, all of you. Yeah, thanks for all the follows and everything. That's great. Cheers, Mark. Thank you.